our old friend, Tesla Autopilot. And it's probably one of the most intelligent real world AI systems in the world. Right, you followed it from the beginning. Yeah, it was one of the most incredible robots in the world and continues to be. Yeah. And it was really exciting. And it was super exciting when it generalized, became more than a robot on four wheels, but uh, a real world AI system that perceives the world. Yeah. Uh, and has can have potentially different embodiments. Well, I mean, the really wild thing about the end to end training is that it, like, it learns to read, like it, it can read signs, but we never taught it to read. So, yeah, we never taught it what we never taught it what a car was or what a person was or a bicy cyclist. Uh, it learnt what what all those things are, what all the objects are on the road um, from video, just from watching video, just like humans. I mean, humans are photons in, control controls out. Like the vast majority of information reaching our brain is from our eyes. Um, and you say, well, what's the output? The output is our motor signals to our you know, sort of fingers and mouth in order to communicate. Um, photons in, controls out. The same is true of the car. But by looking at the sequence of images, it's you've uh, agreed with Ilya Siskeva recently where he talked about LLM forming a world model and basically language is a projection of that world model onto the sequence of yeah. letters and, and you're saying- It finds order in, in, in these things. Um, mm -hmm. It finds uh, correlative clusters. In so doing, it's like understanding something deep about the world. Yeah. Which is like, it's beautiful. That's how our brain works. Yeah, but it's it's beautiful. Photons in, controls out. Neural nets are able to understand that deep meaning in the world. And so the, the question is how far can it go? And, and it does seem everybody's excited about LLMs. So in the space of <laughs> self-supervised learning, in the space of text, yeah, um, it, it seems like there's a deep similarity between that and what Tesla Autopilot is doing. Is it to you basically the same? But they are converging. Now converging. I wonder who gets there faster, understand, having a deep understanding of the world. Or they just will naturally converge. They're both headed towards AGI. Um, the Tesla approach is much more computer efficient. It had to be, because we were constrained on this, this, you know, we only have 100 watts um, and an int eight computer. 144 trillion operations per second, which sounds like a lot, but is kind of small potatoes these days. At int eight. But it's understanding the world at int eight. It's only 256 values. But there, the path to AGI might have much more significant impact because it's understanding, it'll, it'll faster understand the real world than will LLMs and therefore be able to integrate with, with the real world, the humans in the real world faster. They're both um, going to understand the world, but I think Tesla's approach is fundamentally more computer efficient. Mm -hmm. It had to be, there was no choice. Like our brain is very computer efficient, very, very energy efficient. So think of like, what, what is our brain able to do? Um, you know, there's only about 10 watts of higher brain function not counting stuff that's just used to control our body. Um, the thinking part of our brain is less than 10 watts. Um, and that 10, those 10 watts can still produce a much better novel than a 10 megawatt GPU cluster. So there's a six order of magnitude difference there. Um, I mean, the, the AI has thus far gotten to where it is via brute force, just throwing massive amounts of compute and, and massive amounts of power at it. So this is not where, where it will end up. Um, you know, in general, with any given technology, you first try to make it work and then you make it efficient. So I think we'll find over time that these models get smaller, are, are able to do 
produce a sensible output with far less compute, far less power. Um, Tesla is arguably ahead of the game on that front because um, it has. We've just been forced to uh, try to understand the world with a hundred watts of compute, um, and there are a bunch of sort of fundamental functions that we kind of forgot to include. So we have to run them in a bunch of things in emulation. Um, we fixed fixed a bunch of those with hardware four, and then hardware five will be even better. Um, but I, it does appear at this point uh, that the car will be able to drive better than a human, even with hardware three at, and 100 watts of power. And really, if we really optimize it, it could be probably less than 50 watts. What have you learned about uh, developing Optimus, about applying, integrating this kind of real world AI into the space of robotic manipulation, just humanoid robotics. What are some interesting, tiny or big things you've understood? I was surprised at the fact that we had to develop every part of the robot ourselves, um, that there were no off the shelf motors, electronics, sensors, like we had to develop everything. Um, we, we, couldn't, we couldn't actually find a source of electric motors for any amount of money. Um, so it's not even just uh, the, the efficient, inexpensive. It's like a- anything. There's not a no. Huh. So the actuators, it, everything, everything has to be yeah designed from scratch. We tried hard to find anything that was because you think of how many electric motors are made in the world. Mm-hmm. There's like tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of electric motor designs. Um, none of them were suitable for a humanoid robot, literally none. So we had to develop our own design, design it specifically for, for what a humanoid robot needs. How hard was it to design something that can be mass manufactured, could be relatively inexpensive? I mean, if you compare to Boston Dynamics Atlas, it's a very expensive robot. It is designed to be manufactured in the same way they would make a car. And I think ultimately we can make Optimus for less than the cost of a car. It should be, because if you look at the mass of the robot, it's much smaller, and the car has many actuators in it. The car has more actuators than the robot. But there is, uh, the actuators are kind of interesting on a humanoid robot with fingers. So Optimus has really nice hands and fingers. You know, yeah, <laughs> and they could do some interesting manipulation, soft, yeah. soft touch robotics. I mean, one of the tests uh, goals I have is can it, can it pick up a needle and a thread and thread the needle just by looking? How far away are we from that? Just by looking, just by looking. Uh, maybe a year. Hmm. Although I go back to I'm optimistic on time. The work that we're doing in the car will translate to the robot. The perception or the also the control? The... No, the controls are different, but the the video in controls out. Mm-hmm. Um, the the car is a robot on four wheels. The, the, the Optimus is a robot with hands and legs. So you but, can just... They're, they're, very, they're very similar. So the entire machinery of the learning process yeah. end-to-end is just, you just have a different set of controls. Optimus will figure out how to do things by watching videos. <laughs>